Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to my garden. As you can see, I'm standing in the kitchen garden right now. This is our initial kitchen garden in the main garden area. We've got a second kitchen garden now down by the slope, which I'm going to show you in a second. But first of all, I just want to introduce you to this little area here. So as you can see, um, the kitchen garden is framed by boxwoods which is kind of like a formal element what personally I enjoy to have. And I think it also kind of like separates it and gives it like its, its purpose. It shows like you step into it. And I just like this feeling of like stepping into a kitchen garden. Luckily enough, our boxwoods are looking really good and fine. I know that a lot of you guys are dealing with all the pests that boxwoods have at the moment, like the blight or the caterpillar. Luckily, we're not dealing with that. So I'm very thankful and very happy for that. Maybe it's just because we're so northeast, I don't know, but so far boxwoods are thriving really well up in here. Anyways, I just want to tell you how this uh, little kitchen garden is actually set up. So to my left you see some shrubs. These are black currants. So they arrive like um, mid-July, mid-July, August, around that time of the year. So what we do with them, actually we make alcohol with them. So we make a really nice liquor, we pick them, we might freeze some of them for jam or jelly, but the majority goes into like a liquor that we do. Then we got one quince back here, which is fruiting quite well this year. And then you can see my hat already hitting this little beauty. This is our wisteria, which kind of grows all the way around our garage. Um, I do it because I'm not a huge fan of our garage and I think just by putting a lot of different plants all the way around it you're hiding it really well and I think I was quite successful with that. And on top of it the wisteria is flowering each year really beautiful around May I suppose. So when you're working here around May in the kitchen garden um, the scent of the wisteria is just impeccable. It's really beautiful. Anyway, so what do we have in the kitchen garden? In the front row, I've got three blueberries. Unfortunately, they are not carrying any fruits this year. Maybe because I was um, putting them into new soil, I bought special blueberry soil. So, I th But they, they came up with a lot of fresh growth and fresh branches. So I think next year it's going to be a lot better than this year. Then you got to see a lot of like bare soil here. So this is the area where we were growing our salad crops broccoli and onions. The salad was amazing this year. So at one point I just couldn't eat it anymore. I just had three rows of salads and it was so much that it, it came to the point where I was like, okay, whatever, let's, let's just let it shoot up and grow and whatever. The broccoli though was amazing. I had maybe 10 plants of broccoli, I ate them all. They're really delicious. And I kind of forgot how good broccoli grown from the garden actually tastes. My parents always grew them, but I was not that keen on like vegetable growing the past years and kind of the buck got me this year and I think I'm really going to continue like the broccoli was so good it was just like a complete different texture and taste and maybe also like when you nurture a plant you grow it in your garden then you cook it and eat it I guess that's also the point when it just tastes a lot better. Um, then I got a row of some herbs in here. So I've got sage, which is always doing really well in here. I've got some rosemary. I had three basil plants there, but I don't know what happened. They kind of faded out a little bit. Then I got potatoes in here, which we're going to harvest in a second. So today's video is not just about showing you the kitchen garden. It's also about harvesting and showing you how well our crops are performing. And there, there are some surprises I'm going to tell you. The last crop that we're growing in here are our raspberries. So we only got autumn fruiting raspberries. And even though you're in the distance, you might see there are pops of red everywhere in here. So they are fruiting extremely well this year and the fruits are tasting really well. I'm just gonna pick one. Alfie is actually lying on the floor right next to the camera. So she's gonna get this beauty in a second. She's already looking at me. So look at it. Raspberries are looking really perfect. I already had them for breakfast today. They're so good. So Alfie. There you go. Oh yeah, she's munching her raspberry. She definitely enjoys them. Um, so a few words about like the soil in the kitchen garden. So I think in March this year, what I did is I removed the entire old soil that was in here and put fresh compost in there and some fresh garden soil, like special soil that I bought that is made for kitchen gardening. Dug it all under. There's a butterfly on me. How cute is that? <laughs> okay, anyways. <laughs> Um, so I just dug all the fresh soil under, put some bone flour in, 
just to prepare the soil well for the season and clearly it was working out. The soil structure is really lofty and nice because in the kitchen garden the one thing that you don't want to have is a really compact firm soil because you want that all your crops have the ability to really root in well and especially when you're growing potatoes because potatoes want to sit in a very nice lofty soil. And the way how to keep it like that is I don't really step on the soil. What I do is I have my little wooden plank here and if I want to get in here I just throw it in there and if I step on, I just step only on the wooden plank. So what happens is that my entire body weight will be leveled on the wooden plank. So I don't have like my weight just on my two foot pressing the soil down. So this is a system that works actually quite well. Um, what I'm going to do as well today after the harvesting is I am going to prepare the soil for next year. So I decided not to sow any kind of like winter crops like spinach or anything. I'm going to do something that my grandmother used to do and she was very successful with that which is a green fertilizer. So I bought a pack, got it here, of clover seed. Uh, seed and what you do basically is like I've already started weeding it So I'm just going to rake the entire soil over just to loften it up a little bit and then sprinkle a thin layer of the clover on top of it It's supposed to rain tomorrow, which is good and the temperatures are gonna stay in the low 20s Kind of like that range So in theory the clover is supposed to germinate within the next 10 days to two weeks and what it does is basically the roots go into the soil and break up the soil structure again, which is always a good thing for a soil. And then when the first frost comes, all the green part that grows on top will die back. And then I come in with my garden fork and we'll just work it all in well, because then the green part will decompose into the soil and just prepare it with all the nutrition for next year that I need to grow a complete new crop of salad or broccoli or cauliflower, whatever I want to try out for next year. So this is basically what I'm going to do in this video. I hope you enjoy it and let's start with harvesting the potatoes. Before I get in there with my garden fork, I just quickly want to show you how glorious the potatoes are looking. Isn't that a pretty sight? Not really, I know, but this is actually how potatoes should look like. I get a little closer in there. You can see a little sneak in a tertium found its way in there as well. Guess what I'm going to have for dinner today? Anyway, so all of the brown and dead material that you see lying here on the floor, this is the entire top growth from the potatoes. So what happens is that throughout the entire summer, they were growing, they were flowering, they actually even produced fruit. So I could just show you how they look like. There's a fruit lying here. Don't eat those. They're absolutely not edible. Only the tubers that grow underground are edible. So never eat the fruit of the potato. So, um, you see that the potatoes are ripe. This is how I learned it, because I grew up in a farmer community in northern Germany. When the top growth dies back, that means that the tubers don't get any feet anymore, because the top part is brown, it, there are no leaves, there's nothing that can feed your potatoes that are growing under the soil. You can, of course, harvest them earlier if you wanted to, but I want to have an entire full growing season and the perfect crop and get as many potatoes as possible. So this is really exciting, so let's see what I can get out of the soil.
Harvesting potatoes is definitely something that always excites me. It never gets old. Every time, every single year I'm doing it, it's almost like a little treasure hunting because you never really know how successful you were. And I'm really happy. I put in, I think, four potatoes um, in end of March. End of March, April, I put in four potatoes and I was already harvesting like six or seven potatoes in the front row like two weeks ago because I was just like intrigued. I just needed to know how they perform, how they taste. It's the first year that I was ever growing this kind of crop. I forgot the name to be honest because um, when I planted them I didn't really intend of like sharing what I'm doing in the garden with you guys. So for next year I'm really going to uh, write down everything what I plant to uh, tell you properly how things are performing. So anyways I got everything in my little harvest basket which I bought brand new this year. I'm really happy with this one isn't it cute it's made in France so stuff like that always excites me so here you can tell what I was harvesting and I think everything looks really well in here so these are the potatoes and they really vary in size we have like really good sized potatoes and then we got like itty bitty tiny potatoes so I think the tiny potatoes maybe might find access into Alfie's stock food that I'm gonna cook tonight. I also harvested a few onions but to be honest I wasn't really focusing on onions and they are tiny they're kind of looking lukewarm. I'm gonna put them in the garden shed now just to let them dry off and then I'll use them. One of the projects for next year that I really want to focus on is growing onions because I love to cook with onions I really like them and I think that there are a lot of great varieties to choose from so even if you have like experience with growing onions and there's a variety that you could recommend me that grows well in our climate conditions. I'm not really sure what kind of climate zone we are. I think something with seven, I guess. Anyways, if you have a recommendation, I'm really happy if you share it with me and how you grow your onions. But so far, this is a good first start for harvesting crops. As you can see, I have already prepared the soil a little bit. So I was just raking through it just to loft everything up a little bit. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I will sow the clover seeds in here. So I've got my pack here and what I'm going to do is just sprinkle a like, like a thin light layer on top of it. Maybe I should just show you how the seeds are looking since I've never grown them before. Even I had no idea how they're looking. Can you see it? So this is how the seed is looking. They're quite good size so I think that they are quite easy to actually sow which always is, makes it nicer, a lot nicer actually. Um, and what I'm going to do is just I sprinkle a thin layer on top of it. I'm not even going to water it in because we are um, having a complete day of rain tomorrow. So this is going to do the job. So all I'm going to do now is just sprinkle a thin layer. I wanted to say almost like feeding chicken, but I don't know if you guys know how to feed chicken. Just on top so that there's a little bit everywhere. And as I said, the weather conditions are good. So we're still expecting quite nice temperatures for the next few weeks to come. So I'm hoping that they will germinate fairly well and fast. So that I can give you an update hope on this project. Hopefully like, I don't know, maybe in two weeks, maybe in three weeks. Let's see how quick it goes. Maybe now our next garden tour already. So you can see how well they are doing. This is always super easy. Very easy and fast. A little bit here. Okay, I think that's it. It looks quite even. I see seeds everywhere. I don't see seeds here. So maybe just a little sprinkle here. And that's it. That's as, as easy as it is. I mean, that took a minute out of my day now. And I think this is gonna improve the soil a lot and tremendously. So next thing, let's go to the slope and I'm gonna show you what I have to harvest down there. We're down at the slope now. This is the last layer. So what happened to the slope? I kind of built different layers like terraces. So we got four layers in total. So we're at the bottom layer now and that one is dedicated only for food production. So we're growing all different kinds of vegetables here, which I'm going to show you in a second. Then the top layer of the slope will be or is already an extension to the garden. So I already put some first perennials in there, some roses. And what I want to do is create an extra flower bed at the rear end of the garden to connect connect the slope with the garden so that the fence at the end of the garden kind of disappears a little bit and it all grows together and feels just more organic. 
Then we got two more layers here, the second and the third one, and they are dedicated only to growing cut flowers. So in the first layer, I grow my dahlias and some annuals like zinnias or cosmos. And then in the third layer, I grow pretty much only um, perennials. I also got some snapdragons in there, so it's a mixture of everything. But the perennials, they all come from the garden. So they were like spare plants or plants that are propagated from cutting or that have self-seeded and I just had extra plants. I just put them in here and I'm really happy with this because how I use a slope is predominantly for production. So what I have, I grow cut flowers in here and I grow vegetables in here, which is really exciting. Um, I'm gonna grab my phone in a second and just walk you through this entire area here just to show you what's going on, what I'm growing, there's some surprises. And then we also go to the top layer again because my pumpkin vines, I grew in different locations and the ones that are growing on the top layer are actually performing best. And I think the reason is because they get most of the sun. I thought that the ones down here would perform a little better because it's more moist here, but I guess the sun was definitely key for them. And I've, I've got so many pumpkins. Honestly, I stopped counting at one point. I don't know what to expect. I really need to amp up my game on what to do with them. So if you guys have any recipes that you want to share with me and what to do with pumpkins, please do so. How to preserve them, what's yummy, what's good to do with them. So I'm open to, to receive all of your nice suggestions and recipes. Just to give you a quick idea on where we are located. So we're really at the end of the property. So as you can tell, the farmland starts just right there. So we got a little hedge of all different kind of shrubs like elderberries and I don't know, plums, all different kind of stuff. And this is the bottom layer where I grow all different kind of vegetables right now. So the first one I'm growing and I want to show you are these tiny squashes here. I don't really know the name to be honest. I buy them in a the supermarket sometimes and I really love to cook with them. Um, they have a really nice and tender flesh so you um, when they're small you can just chop them up and just uh, fry them uh, together with some lemon zest for example they're delicious with pasta so if you make a pasta with some lemon oil sea salt and some of those and roast it they are really really good there so what i'm going to do start harvesting quite some of them because as you can tell the plants they got mildew, the leaves start dying back, so it's really time for them to get harvested. And I was not on top of it, to be honest. Some of them are a little too big, maybe, but I see what I can do with those. So if we move forward, what we have here is some nasturtiums, and I need to pull them. They are really not looking good at all anymore. But anyways, I was harvesting them. I was eating the leaves, eating the flowers. So here's a nasturtium where you still got to see the flowers. I think they're actually really pretty on top of it. I mean, it's a really lovely crop because you can eat the leaves. They're kind of peppery. I think they're a lot nicer than a uh, rocket, for example. I really prefer eating nasturtiums and the flowers are edible as well, which is always pretty to have these flowers in a salad. Then the next thing that I was growing here, I built a little trellis made up of bamboo canes and I grew beans on here. So that is a variety called Blauhilde. So I say it in German because I've kind of find it weird when I say German words in English. Um, this is how the seed pots are looking like. I already started harvesting them two weeks ago, so there are just a few left. Um, they're really great for storing. You can just chop them up, put them in a bag and freeze them. So this is what I do. So we're going to have these throughout the entire winter. So looking forward to that. What happens when you boil them, they will change color. So they don't keep this lovely like plum rich dark color they will change to green beans but the taste of these is really good so much better than anything that you can buy in the supermarket and as we move forward here that was an experiment so i was never growing what you see now ever before so i've got five plants of bell peppers and they are performing just amazing just if you look at that they are perfection to me the taste is impeccable they are spicy they're sweet they have great flavor what i do is like i cut them in half put some sea salt oil and fresh grinded pepper on top of it put in the oven and just let them roast in the oven they are so delicious and if you see this is one plant and this one plant has one two three four five six seven seven peppers on it and besides one, all of them are ready to be harvested. So this is really what I'm going to do today, start harvesting them. And I thought maybe roasting some of them and put them in uh, oil in a jar so maybe I can store them a little longer. Then if we move forward, there is another crop that I was not growing before, but I remember my parents growing it. 
in the past, and I really like it, it's kale. So what happened is that I don't know really what was tackling the kale, but clearly something was feasting on it. So most of the leaves are looking like this, which is not yummy and definitely not edible. But I thought, you know what, I'll just leave it. I can't be bothered, I'm not gonna pull them. And what happened? They have fresh new growth on top and it looks perfect. Nothing is happening here, nobody's munging on them. So I'm really positive that I can actually harvest a little bit of the kale. Still gonna wait because uh, what I do with kale, I boil it. So I wait until the first frost. And what happens when the first frost comes, the leaves change the texture a little bit and they get sweeter. So the sugar in it condenses. But look at the color. So beautiful, like purple, green, really intriguing. I'm excited how it looks when you boil it. Then if we move forward, this is where it starts to look really messy now. Uh, we had some cucumbers, but the cucumbers, uh, I've harvested all of them. They were not a lot, to be honest, but they were good. They were delicious, made some mustard cucumbers. So that was good, ready to be pulled out, got some parsley in here. And then if I just swing around, I have three pumpkin vines. They were all growing up on this layer and what happened, they all grew down basically onto the hedge and onto the border of our property. So all these big leaves that you're seeing there are pumpkins, believe it or not. I don't even know how long the vines grew. I guess some of them probably up to seven or eight meters or even longer. And I can spot a few pumpkins in there. So I need to see how I'm gonna harvest them. So if I swing around, trying to focus with my finger on it, there you go, there's a pumpkin, there's one, which is a good size. So maybe I get down there and start harvesting that one. Anyways, I'm super excited about what was going on here. So what we're gonna do now is go up on the top layer and then I show you the, how the pumpkins are looking up there. You guys, we are on the top layer of the slope now. So if I swing to the left, there you see this is the top layer which will be the extension to the garden and I already started planting up a little bit. You can see some of the uh, cherry brandy rebecca, which are really pretty. And if I swing back to my right now, there you can see parts of my cut flower garden. So there are some of the dahlias, some zinnias, sunflowers, amaranth, everything performing still really well and beautiful. I need to get in and dad had the dahlias though. I think I'm gonna do it tonight still because otherwise they'll stop flowering at one point. Um, if you don't have a cut flower garden yet, I can heartily recommend do it. You'll be so happy. If you love to have fresh flowers on your coffee table, a cut flower garden will make you really happy. I just came here last night, cut in a big bundle just of all the different things I like, and it is amazing. It's just an amazing experience. Anyways, uh, the pumpkin vine on top of here grew massive. This is one pumpkin plant. All these big leaves that you see are coming from just one single plant. Isn't that just amazing? It's, it's crazy and it produced so many pumpkins. So if I go down here with you, you can see there's one pumpkin here and in total there are five more. So what I'm gonna do is gonna look which pumpkin is perfect to be harvested and then I show you how to harvest pumpkins. We are on the other side of the slope actually. Now this is kind of like a little neglected area where I just keep my pots, for example, if I sow annuals or stuff like that. So this is why you see landscape fabric. And I decided to put one single pumpkin vine in here. And that one was definitely fruiting extremely well. I was counting and I could just count 10 pumpkins. And I think that they are more actually, because the vine is really trailing down the slope and I can't really see what's happening there, but I know uh, in a month or so, if I go down there, I'll definitely gonna find more pumpkins. Anyways, I just wanna show you how you know that a pumpkin is ripe to be harvested. And um, the first thing that you're looking for is that the stem where the pumpkin fruit is actually attached to the plant looks woody. And this one definitely does. It really feels woody, it looks woody. So this is definitely a good indicator. The next thing that you're looking for, how is a rind looking? So this one is definitely looking really good. It's like intense in color, which is always good for these kind of pumpkins. And the next thing you wanna do is like, check with your fingernail how the rind feels. Like if you can scratch with your fingernail over it and you can't leave any, if you can't really get into the pumpkin rind, then you know this is definitely ready to be harvested. The last thing you can do is just like knock on it. Hello, anybody home? 
And if it kind of sounds hollow in the inside, then you know for sure this pumpkin is ripe for harvesting. So all I've got to do now is I've got my secateurs here and just come in and just cut it off like that. And that's all you do. And always make sure that you leave this part on your fruit because this is going to dry off and make sure that the pumpkin stalls longer. So when it comes to storing pumpkins, they actually store best at a room temperature about like 15 to 17 degrees, kind of dry, and then you can store them for a really long time, which is perfect for me because otherwise I don't know what to do with all of these pumpkins. Isn't that just a beautiful sight? To me it really is. Just all the colors already amaze me, but what amazed me even more is how much fun I had in the past year growing fruit and vegetable. And I'm really determined on continue with the same spirit and energy next year that I had. Because nothing's more satisfying than taking all of this produce inside and making a lovely dinner out of that. So I didn't show you how I'm actually harvesting the tiny squashes. Here you don't really look at the stem, other than how you do it with the pumpkins. Here you just look at the size. So this is the perfect size and when they are perfect to be harvested. Because the flesh is just nice, juicy, tender inside and can't wait to make something delicious with them today. Um, the bell peppers, I harvested a good handful of them. They're really good. Like you can already feel that they are good. Like they're not like soggy or anything or thick. They have like the perfect feel to them so they will be really delicious got some on nasturtiums and one pear came down the tree so my dessert will be something with a pear today apparently anyways i really enjoyed showing you the uh, crop of my gardens and what i'm harvesting i hope it was interesting for you and that you enjoyed this video i'd be really love to welcome you in one of my videos to come until then take care and have a lovely day bye